Greenberg from HuffPost Sports, and I'm joined by U.S. Olympian Gabby Douglas, who's going to chat with us about her Olympic experience, the Sochi Games, and what else she's got going on. So, hey, Gabby. Hey. It's good to be uh, here. So, so thanks, thanks for taking out some time, and I guess, obviously, you're, you've been all over the place lately, you know, with your sort of post-Olympic experience. It would be great if you could just sort of catch up everyone who joined us with, you know, what, what's your day-to-day -day like these days? Uh, you know, my day-to-day -day, uh, is a little different from before I went to Olympic Games because I was just, you know, kind of the underdog and coming up, uh, up the ranks. But now I just have a couple, like, appearances on the side or I'm doing, like, amazing opportunities on the side. And also I started training again, so hopefully I'll compete this year. And, uh, you know, my main goal right now is to go to another Olympics, so I'm really focusing and training on uh, going to Brazil in 2016. And obviously I would imagine, you know, you mentioned going up through the ranks and the, the sort of drive to get to the Olympics, to get to the level of success that you achieved, has to be very different than the drive to get back. I mean, what are the d different sort of motivational challenges that you face now as opposed to, you know, a few years ago? Yeah, it's different because you know, I was always in the gym training and uh, working really hard to, you know, having that spot on the Olympic team. And now it's it's sort of different because I'm an Olympic champion, and you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be that's what's gonna be different is just coming back. And I think everyone's gonna have like really high expectations for me, but um, I'm just gonna go out there and say I'm not. You know, Olympic champion. I'm just Gabby Douglas buying for a spot in 2016. But I just use motivational like quotes and stuff that I do that I did do uh, before the London Games because that always helped me. And you know, looking back and looking forward, are there people who were role models for you as a younger gymnast, sort of coming up, that are that are different now? You have different role models as someone who's looking to sort of sustain success. You know, people who were able to do it for a long time. Who are some of my role models? Uh huh. Well, since I was always in the gym world, I would say Dominique Dawes is one of my role models. Um, Carly Patterson actually like in, like she just brought me into this new world because I was watching the 2004 Olympic Games and I saw her doing a scale on bars that I was learning and she, you know, she inspired me to you know want to go to the Olympics and um, Dominique Dawes inspired me to you know be like a a greater gymnast and um, my mom is also my, one of my role models she always taught me you know to keep fighting and just to keep pushing and uh, you know never quit or give up what you want your passion and you know now after your successes in London you're a role model for a lot of young athletes and young women you know what sort of responsibility do you feel or pride do you feel in, in that status um, you know, it is a little bit of a responsibility, but um, I'm just blessed to have this platform where I get to be this role model and uh, inspire these young girls or women or, you know, whoever it may be. And I just love being in this pos in this position and just telling young girls, um, you know, what my mom told me, just keep fighting and uh, you never want to have regrets, so just keep pushing 100% and, um, you know, listen to, lis listen to your coaches and your parents and, um you know, I, I love being in this position because I remember when I was in their shoes and I looked up to someone else, and it's just it's just such a treat for me. And you know, when you came home after the London Games, obviously you and your teammates were you know the center of attention and some of the biggest stars to emerge from the games. Was there sort of a moment for you when it really hit home that like, wow, I, I am someone who is looked up to, I am someone who, who really is going to be in the spotlight. Was there like a, any particular moment where you realized sort of how big you had gotten? I think um, it definitely didn't sink in um, when I won, but I, I think one of the biggest like wow moments for me, like whoa, I, like I am a somebody and, and, and this role model is just when different people started started coming up to me and my mom and just telling, um, they were just telling us how inspiration we were and we made a big impact in you know their lives and I think that was really the like whoa I you know inspire these people and you know I, I, I'm a somebody. 
and you know obviously that you know status as as you put it us being a somebody has really opened up a lot of doors for you with things that you know maybe you wouldn't have imagined doing just a few years ago you know I, I saw you were you were in New York for Super Bowl for Fashion Week you've gotten to do a lot of things you know what what were the sort of most unexpected opportunities that have have come your way um so this is funny because I totally thought I was just gonna go to the Olympics and just come home, like do the best I could and just come home and have dinner. I didn't know like all these opportunities were gonna like, you know, be coming my way and that was just, you know, really cool for me because just getting to do like red carpets and um, you know, different appearances is so cool. But man, um getting to do the Super Bowl, I was a special correspondent for Inside Edition. I think that that was pretty cool, and there's just been, you know, really fun opportunities that I've done, and I don't know if I can pick a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> or how about just a, a one that, maybe not a favorite, but one that seems the oddest or the strangest opportunity that came your way? Hmm, oddest or strangest? Um, I haven't really got any of those because all the opportunities that I've done have just been so fun, so relaxed, and um, I always have a good time, whether it's doing photo shoots or commercials or, you know, going to different sets doing interviews. It's just, you know, I always, I, I always have fun. I love doing it. And, you know, I think as once the, the Winter Olympics conclude and everyone sort of starts turning their attention towards Rio, I think, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about you, your, you know, potential to, to perform there and, and a lot of your fellow Olympians and one of the talking points will likely be you know about the sort of distractions that all of the people who succeeded in London have had sort of building up to Rio and is there any part of you that worries that all of these great you know off the mat opportunities are the sort of things that could you know make it harder for you to get to where you need to be athletically going forward? Um. You know, not really. Uh, are you talking about like all the opportunities on the side? Uh -huh. Am I worried about like uh, um? No, because some opportunities that I do is probably like on a Saturday or on a Sunday, which um you know Sundays I don't have gym, but pretty much right now my main focus is uh, Rio, and um, I'm just gonna focus on that. And you uh -huh. know, but. Bigger and better opportunities may come after Rio, or um, probably. I mean, I'm not really worried. You know, I'm just gonna go okay. out there, and you know, opportunities are just gonna come after. Terrific. And and you mentioned some of your your off days and that. What's your sort of training schedule like these days? Well, it's different because uh, my gym schedule is a, uh, you know, kind of varies. But I do like. Four hours some days, six hours uh, other days, and I go six days a week. And well, that's that sounds like you're you're definitely keeping your eye on the prize <laughs> there. Um, you know, what are the sort of competitions between now and Rio that you're are sort of your target points of to sort of measure how far you're coming? I really want to compete in the PNG Nationals Championships this year, and World Championships is what uh, one of another big big competitions that we have so I think those two this year would be my main goal leading up you know to Rio mm -hmm. and as far as you know your 2012 Olympic teammates uh, you know do you guys train at all with each other during the year you know between the games at this point or do you only sort of see them at big events you know what's your sort of interaction with, with all of them like um we kinda we did see each other uh, after because we we would sometimes uh, go to the same award shows, but not so much uh -huh. now because I think we're all kind of focused on um, you know what we want to do in life and our own goals. But we did not train together. We all kind of live all over the place, but we would come together uh, as a team. It's called the National Team Training Camps. It's in Houston, and we kind of all would come together and train together and then fly back out and, you know, train wherever we trained at. <laughs> and, you know, obviously the the five of you were such a big hit in London and your successes 
in competition and, and just sort of in general were, were really big talking points for everyone. You know, what are your sort of fondest memories from that period? Um, ooh, from the Olympics, you mean? Yeah. Um, I would say the team competition was one of my big moments. It's just, you know, kind of hard doing the team competition because you don't want to mess up and hinder the team score. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was one of my big wow moments for me because competing together as a team and competing together as sisters and supporting each other was just, you know, really fun for me. We all had a blast. And team finals was one of the, like, funnest competitions. And, you know, for gymnasts, a team competition can almost seem a little counterintuitive because you're all individual athletes primarily, you know, did you feel like, you know, that that was your favorite because it sort of gave you a chance to have a little bit of a different support system or a different sort of feeling of responsibility? Yeah, because the team finals is so much different than the individual fi all around finals because it's kind of one man for themselves and team finals we have to operate together as a team. So it's a different vibe and a different feeling because, um, you know, you're supporting each other and not saying that, you know, in the individual competition we want each other to fall, but we're still supporting them in the, in the individual competition. It's just a different vibe, a vibe from team finals because we're all operating together as one. Well, and, and I don't know if, if you've had a chance to watch too, too much of the Sochi Olympics, but they actually introduced a team figure skating mm -hmm. event this year, which seemed a sort of similar, similar thing, and, and it was... Yeah these athletes who normally are, you know, not that they want each other to fail, but are competing against each other, but it gave right. them a chance to be on a team. Be on a team. Um, and it seemed yeah. like, you know, it, it, for, for you as, as an Olympian, as a gymnast, you know, what, are, what Olympic winter games sort of stand out to you or, or hold your attention best? Um, I'm a huge fan of figure skating. I've been watching uh, each competition, um, you know, of figure skating, and... I just have so much, first of all, I just have so much respect for all these athletes doing, um, you know, different sports, because when I try, when I try, like, ice skating and all that, it's so hard, so you have to use different muscles, and I just have so much respect for, um, you know, these athletes who are competing in Sochi, and I was recently watching what, the ski-a-thon, and it's like an mm -hmm. hour, because they have to hike up the mountain and ski, and that takes so much endurance and effort, so... Um, I think the ski line definitely stands out to me the most because you have to have so much endurance and, you know, stamina to finish that. And, uh, you know, ice skating is too. I, I'm a huge fan of ice skating. Well, and obviously the, with the ice skating, there certainly are parallels as far as the ages of some of the competitors and the sort of combination between athleticism and artistry uh, they, that is, it, you know, part of gymnastics. Um, and, it, and it seems like there is another occasional parallel in people being not always pleased with the judges' scores. So, so those things seem to be somewhat similar. It is, because we wear the leotards and, um, you know, we wear the grips, they wear the skates, but, you know, they get judged too and um, they do flips and tricks and, you know, so do we. And, you know, they're powerful but yet graceful, which also gymnasts are too. We're powerful yet we have to be graceful and you know, artistic. They do, they do seem to get a little bit more leeway with uh, their outfits and the gear they get to wear for their performances, yes. more so. I, uh, I kind of envy them. No, I don't, but <laughs> I'm like, sometimes they wear, like, all this bling and, like, gloves and, you know, like a red coat and stuff, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, uh, they, they can be more fashion forward than, than some of the other athletes, for sure. Yes. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned that the skiathlon and, and a lot of the other endurance events going on in Sochi. Uh, you know, as, as far as, as you, as an athlete, obviously you got involved in, in gymnastics mm -hmm. at, a, at a really young age. Is, is there another sport that you, A, would have loved to have tried, or B, thought that, you know what, maybe I could be good at that, too? Um, maybe, okay, I'm just going to say, I'm pretty sure this is predictable, but ice skating. I, okay. 
I mean, I love how they spin so fast, and I love how they do the jumps and, uh, you know, just kind of shock to the crowd. I would definitely want to become an ice skater. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we'll we'll look out. We'll we'll look out. Maybe after Rio, you can you know get some skates on, and we'll see what's possible. For sure. Um, you know. And it seems like one of the sort of ongoing issues or things that we keep hearing about from Sochi is the, the Sochi problems that the athletes are, and journalists are having as far as a bobsledder had to break down his bathroom door and people are having all sorts of problems, uh, you know, in the Olympic Village and all that sort of stuff. Was there anything like that in, in London? I mean, what was your sort of off-the-field experience in London in the village and meeting everyone like? I thought it was pretty good. We had no, you know, real difficult problems. Uh, everything was set and secure, and you know, they made us feel so safe. And I, I didn't have any problems. I mean, in the Olympic Village, it's just it's huge, and the cafeteria is like the size of three football fields. And just meeting <laughs> different athletes is, in, uh, it's amazing. And Everyone knew we were gymnasts because we were the shortest ones in the Olympic Village. So they were like, oh, guys, look, those are the gymnasts over there. Because everybody was, like, up to here and we were, like, down to here. <laughs> and, you know, we had no problems. We just had fun, loved meeting different athletes and hanging out in our dorms and just competing. And, you know, as far as sort of mingling with and meeting all the other athletes, was there anyone in London who you know, you were starstruck by, I think, as you said, a lot of people wanted to meet you and your teammates at that point, but yeah. who, who were you the one who was sort of feeling very enthusiastic about meeting? I would have to say Michael Phelps. I love him. He, his, wow, like his demeanor, and I love his determination to go after and fight for what he wants, and I have so much respect for him, and I was like in awe meeting him. I was like, oh, <laughs> you're so amazing. And, and you mentioned also that they made you feel safe in London, and obviously security in Sochi yeah. has been sort of an ongoing issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as someone who, you know, knows what it's like to go to the Olympics, you know, do, do you think you would have had any reservations leading up to Sochi about going? I mean, there were some athletes who didn't want their families to go, for example, because they were worried about it, you know. Would that um, have been a factor for you at all? You know, I wouldn't have, if I was an athlete competing in Sochi, I would not worry about, I would not be worried about the security. I would be worried about my performances and what I had to mm -hmm. do in Sochi because they picked me out of a lot of people. They picked this very few to go out and represent USA, so we shouldn't be worried about the problem. We should be worried about, you know, what we want to do in Sochi. And London was so strict. If you didn't have your credential, you were not entering anything. Like if I didn't have my credential, even though, you know, we were Olympic champions, we were not allowed in anywhere. So they I'm pretty I told um you know, other people before, that they're going to do their best to make sure those athletes feel safe and secure. And, you know, another ongoing issue in Sochi is, you know, dealing with activism there, both with, you know, groups in Russia protesting some of the restrictive laws there, notably the, the anti-gay propaganda law. Yeah. And athlete activism is something that, you know, sort of seems to come and go with in certain periods, you know, decades where athletes are more outspoken or less outspoken. And, yeah. you know, you mentioned your platform. Is there anything that you hope to be able to use your platform to, you know, any social change or causes that you want to sort of put yourself behind now that you have this platform? You know, I am using this platform to be just positive. And I want to be able to help other people if they're going through a challenge or difficulty. I want to, you know, start a foundation one day and um, help them. I am an athlete ambassador for Right to Play, so kids have the right to play if they have any disadvantage. Any disadvantages. So I, um, I just love being a part of these foundations because I know how hard it was for me coming up the ranks because I did have 
a lot of things that held me back. Like, my family died. We weren't the richest kids on the block. And, you know, I came from a singlehood parent. I came from a single parenting hood. And there's a lot of things that could have held me back. But if I didn't have the support and the resources that I did, uh, you know, back then, I don't know if I would have ever accomplished my dream. So I think it's very important for me to use this platform and just give back. And, you know, as far as the sort of sacrifices that your loved ones made and the support they provided, you know, are there, were there any sort of make or break moments as you were, you know, trying to achieve your dreams where whether it was your mother or, or, or anyone else in your life, you know, took a risk or did anything that, you know, enabled you to get where you were that, you know, still stands out to you? Yeah. Um, I am so blessed to have a family that I... I do today because they have sacrificed so much for me. My sister, my sisters gave up, you know, their sport so I could accomplish mine. And my mom is just she's such a power woman. And I remember she told me um, she sold like pretty much all her jewelry, her jewelry, so I could, uh, you know, keep training. And she, uh, you know, worked like three different jobs and three different job shifts so I could still be in the gym and accomplish my dream and my mom is oh my gosh like I don't I have just speechless for her because all the things that she has done so I could keep training and accomplish my dream is just unbelievable I'm like what mom you did this and she's like of course I'll do that because you wanted to go go out there and fight for your dreams so I'm gonna give her I'm gonna give her a big birthday present or <laughs> Christmas present, big present for her in the future. And you know, were these things that you were aware of at the time, or did she do? It, was she able to sort of insulate you from knowing what was happening? And now you've sort of learned about it after the fact. I am still learning and hearing about things that I didn't know because my mom just wanted me to go out there and train. She didn't want me to worry about this and what that happened and this is going on. She just wanted me to go out there with and just focus and an empty mind and just think about me, my coach, and the equipment. So she didn't want me worry she didn't want me worrying about, okay, this and that happened and this is going on. She just wanted me to go out there and, you know, do do my best. And, you know, you, you mentioned the focus that it takes to succeed and, you know, that's a real singular thing that obviously you, you were able to achieve and, and other elite athletes are. You know, is there any sort of trick you have or sort of routine that you go through to be able to sort of turn off everything else when you get into competition or training mode? I kind of zone myself out from the world and just stay in my little tiny bubble. I love saying something motivational whether it's scriptures or quotes and that helps me so much. Just gives me a piece of hope and motivation and um, just gives me motivation to go out there and, you know, do what I love to do. And, you know, sort of looking forward, obviously you have a little bit uh, of, of time to go b before Rio, and obviously you have some events between now and then. What are your sort of goals for the next few years? And for Rio, I mean, do you think it's possible to for, for you and your teammates to repeat what you did in London, or, or wh where are you setting your sights right now? I'm setting my sights on uh, something very positive and you know anything is possible so I'm gonna go to Rio and do the best that I can and I mean come on who doesn't run a race to win the race so of course I want to win the race because <laughs> everyone wants to win so um, you know it's good to set the bar a little higher and Hopefully, I'll bring back some more gold. Well, if you're going to set the bar higher than London, what exactly would that be? Because it was, you, it was pretty high <laughs> there. <laughs> I think setting the bar higher is coming back and defending my title. And I think that sets a huge statement because, uh, you know, I don't think everyone, everyone can do that because most people just go here and just, you know, just 
don't really set the bar a little higher, and that's completely fine because if they want to go here and you know they think they've made it, which is completely fine, then they have their own goals. But I think just raising the bar even higher can motivate people to, in their own life, to set the bar a little higher and make even higher goals than what they did before. And I think that's, you know, a really powerful statement. And you know, as far as obviously. You know, in, in gymnast years, you're in the middle of your career, perhaps, but in regular life years, you're, you're just at the start and you're still a young woman. You know, what is the bar for you in, in the rest of your life? You know, you mentioned some of your having a foundation, being an inspirational, you know, figure for people. Where do you set the bar away from the, the gym right now? Um, I don't really know. I... <laughs> <laughs> I have done, uh, you know, a lot of stuff and scattered around. Like, I got to be, you know, a correspondent for Inside Edition, so I got to see what it's like to, you know, be on the media side. And I, you know, did a lot of things and just done a lot of interviews. And I don't know. I'm like, do I want to be an actress or a producer or do I want to host a show or something? So I, I don't know. So, so maybe the next Gabby Douglas movie you can produce and star and direct also? That's a good idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that, that, there you go. After, after you make the post-Rio movie, maybe that's yes. uh, the way that you do it. So I, I hope sure. then I can get a co-producer credit or something for coming up oh, with yeah. this idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I'll be sure to put your name in there. <laughs> all right. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think that's just about all the questions that I have. Is there anything else going on with you that you want to chat about or let people know about? You have, you know, a lot of your fans are going to watch this and are watching right now. No, not really. I would have to say one of the big things that did happen to me uh, a couple weeks ago was I had a movie about me on uh, Lifetime, <laughs> and I thought that was pretty cool. And to see my the spirit of my life and my family's on TV was just it was amazing. And so, just to sort of follow up on that, you know, looking at that that movie and sort of seeing the reaction to it, you know, now that your story has has been told in such a dramatic fashion. You know, what do you hope is the lesson someone can take from, from your example, from your story? I truly hope that they would say, wow, if she can do that, then I can do that. Because if someone's going through something in their life and, you know, they think they can't overcome that, you guys can overcome anything. And that's what I want them to take from the movie is just to be inspired and say, hey, if she can go through, you know, living in a van and being an underdog to being an Olympic champion, then... I can become something, you know, out of nothing, and I want people to take away that anything is possible. It is, because I had a lot of hardships and challenges growing up, and, um, you know, I, I pretty much never thought that, you know, I could make it, and I had to believe in myself, and um, when things seem crazy and out of control, you can get through them. That certainly is, is something that I think will resonate with a lot of people. So thanks so much for, for chatting with us today. And Thank good you. luck going forward. And uh, I'll see you at the, the red carpet for the sequel movie. <laughs> see you there. Thank right. you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this, Gabby. It was a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you. We do, we do have a couple of people watching, and they were, they were actually asking about your Lifetime movie and what it was like to see yourself sort of portray you and what, what it was like to to watch yourself and your story. Okay, so it was kind of weird watching it on TV because they don't use stage names and it's just real live names and my sister's name and my mom's name and just, but just watching the film, it brought back so many memories, and it was so cool to see it on TV and uh, going through the whole process, picking a younger Gabby and then picking the older version of Gabby. It was just a really cool process, and I actually went to uh, the set of my movie, and it was just it was it was insane. Really, they had duplicate uh, duplicated a gymnastics competition, the one that I compete that you guys probably see like visas or. Uh, 
you know, just a competition, a regular competition, and it looked like the same competition on set, and I just thought, wow, like, this is truly amazing, and the whole process is really fun. Awesome. That was from Monique Davis, and there's lots of great people out there watching you. They're inspired by you. A lot of them want to know how they can get into gymnastics, and, and whether they're women or women of color, uh, being Black History Month, a lot of them are inspired by you and your story, and they have Thank a lot you. of appearance. So they want to know what they could do uh, to help their children with gymnastics. My mom would probably be the best explanation on this. <laughs> but um, I would just say for the parents, just support your child in anything they want to do. If they want, if they have a passion to do gymnastics, then, you know, give it a shot. And uh, got any advice for me, Mom, for the parents? Oh, okay. So just... Support your child. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone, everyone's excited to watch you. They're inspired by you. Uh, they're asking lots of great questions on Google Plus in the Hangout. Uh, you've just been amazing to watch. You're a lot of fun. You're an inspiration to a lot of people. You were nominated for a Kids' Choice Award, or they said you should be nominated for a Kids' Choice Award. <laughs> and they want to know what your favorite music is. They, they want to know about what you do when you're not training. When you're out of what the the little hours that you have. <laughs> well, when I'm not training, I just love to relax and hang out with either uh, my family or my friends and go to the movies or hang out at the mall. So regular teenage stuff. Awesome. So do you have any favorite movies or music? Or are you going to watch the Oscars uh, coming up? I probably am going to watch the Oscars. Um... What's my favorite movie? Awesome. Uh, Gabby Douglas Story. Yes, Gabby Douglas Story. Thanks for that one. That's a good one. <laughs> sure. I mean, they're also asking about celebrity crushes and stuff like that. I mean... <laughs> uh, Ian Summerholder. Oh, all right. Well, that's, I think that's everyone's celebrity crush. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this. Do you, do you, uh, is, people ask me about favorite sports uh, in the Winter Olympics, too. Um, do you watch every night, Sochi, or how often are you watching? Do you I, I do watch, I watch it every night, because my brother has it on the TV, and, he, like, he comes home from practice, and he's, like, uh, turns it on, because we, we DVR it if we can't, uh, if we miss it, then we DVR it and come home from, like, our practices and, like, come home and watch it. Cool. Most like everyone else watching like Walking Dead or whatever, and you got like the Olympics on. You're yes. Tired. Yes. Cool. You like curling, which we here we're still trying to figure out how to be experts at curling. Curling? <laughs> okay, so okay, so I did. I filmed a commercial with Royal Caribbean with uh, two other uh, athletes who are uh, world champions or Olympians, and. We had to do curling for one of the uh, challenges. It's it was so much fun, but it was it was kind of hard. You have <laughs> to like get it in the goal, and you know, I have to brag a little bit because I uh, got bullseye. But it's kind of hard because if someone else goes after you, they can like knock you out of you know your tar your spot, and um, it's. That sound, I mean, sounds sucks. hard. It looks hard. It looks very hard. <laughs> it's very deceptive. We look at it and we're like, we, you can't snowboard, we can't ski, but maybe we can get something done with curling. And I'm looking at yes, Chris over sure. there. Because he's like, yeah, <laughs> curling is, is a lot harder than people give, give credit for. It is. Gabby knows. Sure. It it just kind of sucks when you get the bullseye and then someone comes and knock, <laughs> knocks you out. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, and then people basically just want to see you in, in the Olymp Summer Olympics coming up, and they're rooting for you, they're cheering for you. Oh, thanks, so guys! If you're gearing up for your competition, uh, you know, qualifying and all that stuff, I'm sure you'll be right up there. I mean, do you think about all that stuff? Is it all going through your head uh, I, as, you're, as you're competing? Yes! Uh, wait, what's going through my head? What do you... Like, the competition and the qualifying, like, what goes through your head as you're about to take the mat? Um, just focusing on one skill at, skill at a at a time, and just focusing on uh, breathing first of all, <laughs> and 
it's just my routine, really. I just, you know, take one guy at a time. Awesome. And they asked about Sean Johnson too, and Dancing with the Stars. Do you think in the future, do you watch that show? Is that something that you that you enjoy? I do. I uh, did watch that show. Uh, I watched it when Sean was on. I also watched it when um, Allie was on, Allie Raisman, uh, from the Fierce Five, and it's a good show. I mean, just to be able to dance, like, different dances, and uh, it's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for answering all these questions. There's a lot. No more. problem. We're going to take more of your time, and Chris was great. You were great to, to talk to HuffPost, and we were big fans of yours. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and, uh, Sure. Are there any uh, inspirational quotes or stuff, anything you want to leave us with as we sign off? Or Chris, if you want to say anything? Uh, I'll leave it to Gabby. You mentioned you, you have a lot of quotes that you like, and is there anyone you want to send everyone off with? Yeah, I, um, I do. I love a lot of quotes and scriptures and just inspirational things that just help me and just get me going. And I love... Uh, I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's one of my favorites. All right. Well, thank you so much again on behalf of myself, Matt, and, and all, all the Google Plus folks watching. So good luck, and, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being part of this, Gabby. Thanks oh, thank for watching. Thank you. We're going to take some pictures. Don't hit X yet. <laughs> Bye, everyone out there. <laughs>